In today's video, we're going to be talking all about fabric bias and how it can cause a lot of problems within your quilting, unless you know some tips and tricks to help you through it. There are several techniques in quilting that can have you working on the bias of your fabric, and it can be a disaster if you don't know how to properly handle it. Hi guys, my name is Ladine, and I am the owner of Sugar Stitches Quilt Co. And I love making videos to help you become a better quilter. So if that sounds like you and you're interested in learning more about fabric bias and how you can work with it instead of against it, then this video is for you. So let's get to my top tips on how to deal with fabric bias. Before we can talk about dealing with fabric bias, we should talk about what the fabric bias is. Let's pretend this is a piece of fabric. Here we can see both edges or the selvages of the fabric. If we place the fabric in front of us with the selvages on the top and bottom, this is where the fabric has been cut from the bolt. The direction which is parallel to the selvages is referred to as the lengthwise grain. The direction of the fabric from top to bottom is the crosswise grain. The bias of the fabric is the diagonal direction direction of the fabric. It may be easy to identify these different directions when we have fabric like this, but when it's cut, you may have trouble identifying directions. The bias of the fabric is the diagonal direction of the fabric. It's easy to identify these different directions when we have a large piece of fabric before it's been cut, but after it's been cut or maybe even pieced into blocks, you may have trouble identifying the directions that the fabric grain is running. Problem may begin as you're cutting your fabric into smaller pieces and then piecing and cutting those units. And then if you aren't aware of where the bias edges may be, then you could run into some problems. It's easier to identify this when we can see our selvages, but what if we didn't have them? So let's take a look at this half square triangle that I have. I've used the four at a time method for making half square triangles and in that method you are cutting a square along the diagonal to reveal your four half square triangles this creates biased edges on our fabric so just looking at a completed half square triangle you can't tell where the bias is and if you decide to start sewing this into another block you could be working with a biased edge not realizing it causing problems because you're not handling it correctly you may be asking how can i identify where the bias edges are in a case like this or even with a smaller cut piece of fabric. And if you simply pull on the edges, you can see how stretchy those sides of the fabric are. And I have them in all four areas because again, this is how I cut my half square triangle. So our goal is to identify any problems when dealing with these bias edges, and that's what I'd love to show you today. There are some situations where you may want to sew with the bias because of the stretch. Have you ever heard of bias binding? It's typically used around clothing or bag making because we want the stretch of the fabric to form around the project that we're working with. You may also see this with scalloped edges of quilting can be beautiful but you wonder how do you get those wonderfully rounded edges and that's because of bias binding but in piecing sometimes it can cause problems if not handled correctly some people may want to avoid certain techniques in piecing because it will cause you to work on the bias of the fabric but i want you to have the information available to you so that you can decide whether or not you want to work on a project no matter if it involves working on the bias or not so you could just avoid sewing and cutting on the bias, but don't you think it'd be much easier to learn how to confidently work with it? That's what I thought. First, proper fabric preparation is key. I think it's always beneficial to starch your fabrics. There are so many different type of starches on the market, so try different ones to see what you like. I'll leave a few suggestions in the comments below of some of my favorite brands. Starch gives your fabric structure and strength and can prevent problems when working on the bias. I actually always starch my fabric because not only does it control any issues with bias, but I I have found that it improves the accuracy of my cutting and piecing as well. Next, identify where your bias is so that you can prepare for it. We've covered how you can identify the bias, but you don't necessarily need to pull on your fabric and distort it. 
but just be aware when you are cutting your fabric or creating units of where the biased edges may be so that you can take caution. Always make sure to handle the pieces properly. Be careful when you're pinning or sewing that it may stretch the fabric. And then as you are sewing, lining your fabrics up, make sure that you're not pulling or stretching on them. Next, take care when pressing and don't iron back and forth on your block. Once you have begun to piece and you are constructing your blocks, you should stop the ironing and the moving of the iron back and forth. Instead, you'll want to make sure that you press with your iron, lifting it up and pressing it down on your seams. Another tip is when you have finished sewing a seam, try finger pressing the blocks back first, which can help eliminate distortion as well. And then after finger pressing, you can use your iron to press the seam. Next, squaring up and trimming your blocks as you go along makes a huge difference. As you are cutting your pieces on the bias or sewing them to other blocks, we've talked about how you should handle them carefully and not to distort or pull the fabrics. But what if they do? You may not even notice it sometimes, but trimming your blocks as you go and at various stages in your quilt making process can correct any problems before they become larger ones. Now I hope I've given you lots of helpful tips and tricks on how to deal with fabric bias. Now you don't have to be afraid of certain techniques like four at a time half square triangle making method or sewing curves because now you can handle fabric bias like a boss. Drop me a comment below and let me know what you thought of this video and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you can be notified when I post new videos and tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.